Today I'm going to show you how to prepare yourself for a mortgage. In fact, I still remember how nervous I was buying my first home, thinking whether or not I could even afford the repayment or what would happen if the interest rates were to go up. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly what to do to be ready for your mortgage both now and in the future. I'm Josh Fekir, mortgage broker with Hunter Galloway, the home for home buyers across Australia. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through my seven ways to prepare yourself for a mortgage step by step. So keep watching. I'm sure you've heard the saying before, proper prior planning prevents poor performance. So how do you do this? Well, the first step is to create yourself a mock mortgage. And as the name suggests, it's exactly just that, a pretend mortgage. How you do this is by first working out the repayments on how much you're looking to spend on a property. For the repayments, use a 7% interest rate because over the last 40 years, this has been the average interest rate in Australia. Thus, we'll set you up for ultimate success both now and in the future. Once you've got the repayment, take away what you're paying in rent from this figure. What you're left with is what will take for you to create your mock mortgage and what you'll be looking to save over the next six months consistently. And there you have it. You now set up with a mock mortgage. Let's take a look at some live figures. Meet Jane. She's looking to buy her first home for 525,000 and currently paying $2,200 a month in rent. So based on Jane's repayments over 30 years with a 7% interest rate, her repayment would be $3,493 per month. Knowing this, Jane removes the rent, which she's currently paying, which means her mortgage would come to $1,293 per month in savings. Over the next six months, Jane saves this on top of the rent she's paying and thereby successfully passes her mock mortgage test. The bank refers to people who do this as having propensity to repay, or PTR for short, and would give you props for having mad PTR street cred. Two, know your limits and be under it. What you don't want to do is have a mortgage but not have a life. It's just no way to live. So, know your limits and be under it. It's common for the banks to say you could borrow a million dollars, but just because they say you can, doesn't mean you should. So know what you can comfortably afford without having to sacrifice your lifestyle, know your limits and be under it. So how do you know your limit? It's easy. Look at how much you've consistently been saving over the last 12 months. Put rent on top of this figure and be sure your mortgage payment is under this. Ideally, to work out your mortgage repayment, you'd put a 2% buffer on top of the rate you're given. So for example, if interest rates are 3%, you'd calculate based on a 5% interest rate, including the 2% buffer. Knowing your limit will give you confidence with whatever the future entails and will allow you to maintain your lifestyle. Three, reduce your credit card limits. Did you know that for every dollar you have in credit card limits, it reduces how much you can lend by five? How crazy is that? So if you had a $10,000 credit card limit, it would affect how much you could borrow by $50,000, even if you don't use it. That's to say, if the balance is zero. That's because the banks look at the limit and not how much you owe. So an easy way to prepare for your mortgage is to close all your credit cards you don't use. For the ones you do use, look to reduce the limit to the lowest possible. Four, keep track of your expenses. Banks are becoming forensic accountants. They're looking at every expense and increasingly making it harder for people who don't budget to get a home loan. So it's really important that you look over your bank statements regularly. I recommend this to be done once a week. It'll take between 30 and 60 minutes and can be done in conjunction with tracking your budget. When looking over your statements, what you're really looking for are expenses that can be removed or reduced. So if you have anything that's a regular expense, like a gym membership, ask yourself these questions. Do you use it? Do you need it? And what would happen if you didn't have it? By asking these questions, it'll guide you on whether the expense can stop. Five, pay your bills on time. Your payment history is the difference between getting your home loan application approved versus it being declined. The banks take it very seriously. So to safeguard against it, you want to do these three things. One, 
Set up alerts in your calendars when bills are due. So if it's a weekly, fortnightly or monthly bill, simply create a recurring calendar notification two days prior to your bill being due. In this way, if your bill's lost in the mail or in a spam folder, you'll have more than enough time to find, locate and pay the bill. Two, have all your bills electronically delivered rather than posted. Even better than emails is a service called BPayView. Essentially, the service provider emails your bank the bill and you'll receive a notification via the bank's online platform. I believe this is the best way to avoid important emails ending up in the spam folder and thereby having the chance of missing the repayment. And three, put everything on direct debit. Let me clarify, I'm not talking about direct debits via credit cards. No, 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 no. What I'm talking about is having a BSB and account number for the direct debit. The main benefit of this is that you'll never have to worry about the credit card expiring and having to update these direct debit details. And this is a really easy way of making sure you don't get caught out. Six, get a copy of your credit file. To be prepared, you want to get a copy of your credit file. And there are three main providers in Australia, either Ilion, formerly known as Dun & Bradstreet, Equifax, previously known as Vida, and Experian. Once you've done this, you want to subscribe to get a notification so if any providers look to access your credit file, you'll be alerted. The fee for this service is generally around that $80 mark and it's a great way of safeguarding your credit file. Once you've got a copy of your credit file, what you want to do is these three things. One, dispute any inaccuracies on your credit file. Two, limit the number of inquiries per annum. Rule of thumb is no more than five. Three, remove any unwarranted defaults. And this is very common. So if it's happened to you, not to worry as there's many avenues to fix this. Typically, you'll wanna engage in a credit repair specialist. Their fees range from $500 to $3,000 depending on the severity of the default with many offering no win, no free fee services. And seven, stay in your current role. So if you're thinking of a career change, it might pay to hold off from doing this. Banks want people in a stable job. So you wanna avoid sudden career shifts. Many banks are after people who have been in their current positions for a minimum six months, as they believe the longer your track record, the more likely you are to repay the loan. It's by knowing and applying these seven tips, which will give you the greatest confidence when applying for your mortgage, so that you know that you're ready both now and in the future. So now it's over to you. Are you looking to buy your first home? Did you know here at Hunter Galloway, we help people across Australia? So if you're looking to refinance, purchase or build, you're in good hands. Simply reach out and call us on 1300 088 065 or visit us, visit us online huntergalloway.com.au thanks for watching and remember to hit that subscribe button and until next time i'll see you then